Okay, so this is the hand of a 77-year-old lady who um, unfortunately uh, three weeks ago uh, sustained a forced flexion injury to the right middle and ring finger. As you can see, um, uh, just, just show over here, Kathy. She, she dropped something and then lifted her hand forcefully and it clipped the edge of a granite surface and forced the fingers into flexion from an extended position. Um, so what you can see here, um, as per normal, as per normal orthopedics, it's look, feel, move. So on look, you can see that the fingers are flexed at the DIP joint, both the middle and the ring finger. The other fingers are in full extension. So that's an abnormal posture. You can see there's a little bit of redness over the DIP joint dorsally, but uh, not too severe. And there's not really much in the way of swelling. The most obvious finding is these flexed uh, fingertips. Uh, when you feel, you're looking to see if, uh, if there's any tenderness. There's not much in the way of tenderness, and the normal bony alignment is uh, within normal limits. There's no dislocation of the joint, uh, and there's no obvious uh, swelling or synovitis. There's no temperature changes, uh, and that's really it for uh, palpation. Then when it comes to movement, you want to ask the patient to make a full fist. Make a full fist for me. You can see she can fully flex and open up straight. And when you ask her to extend, you see that she cannot fully extend. Uh, you ca she cannot fully extend. So now when a patient can't fully extend, the question you have to ask is that, the, is that a fixed deformity called a fixed flexion deformity or is it an inability to extend called an extensor lag? So here you can see with this patient, she has full passive extension. I can easily extend her, but when I let go, it droops down again. That's an extensor lag as opposed to a fixed flexion deformity. FFD, fixed flexion deformity. Same goes for the ring finger. Full extension, but she cannot maintain it there. It drops down to about 70 degrees of extensor lag. The problem with, with her is that her finger was in full extension and the sudden flexion moment caused the extensor tendon to pull off the bone. So the extensor tendon normally inserts right at the base of the uh, um, terminal phalanx like that. There's the extensor tendon. It inserts there and it's a valse and it's sitting back here now. And there's a gap between the bone and the extensor tendon. So that's, a, that's called a mallet uh, injury or mallet deformity. It's not possible to surgically repair that. It has to be placed into an extension splint for eight weeks, 24-7, 24, 24 hours a day for eight weeks to keep it in full extension and scar tissue will fill up the gap and she will have the equivalent of a tendon which might not be as perfect uh, or as uh, normal range of motion but it will be good enough and it won't, it won't be stuck at 70 degrees. Uh, most of the time we should consider taking an x-ray um, just to exclude a fracture. Sometimes a small piece of bone pulls off with the extensor tendon and that might have to be managed differently. But as you can see, there's no bony injury here. This is a, uh, a, a, a soft tissue problem. The extensor tendon is probably sitting there and the bone is dropped into a flexed uh, uh, position and deformity.